I'm about to share with you one of the healthiest and easiest things you could do at home for your health, for your gut health, your microbiome, to build up the good bacteria in your body so that the bad bacteria has less of a chance of harming you. I'm going to show you how to do milk kefir, milk kefir. And this is the wonderful device that has made my kefir making life so much easier. It was easy before, but now it's like stupid easy. Here's what the start of the process looks like. This is a first ferment jar and the lid is on very loosely so that the kefir uh, grains, the um, they can breathe. They're aerobic fermenters, something I learned in my microbiology class this last semester. The second jar is in its second ferment. There are no kefir grains in here. This, this cage that's sitting here, you can see at the top. So this kefir cage is in the jar with grains. That's, this is what it looks like. And those grains like some air when they're fermenting. And so this is gonna sit and ferment, first ferment. This one has already been through its first ferment. It's in its second ferment. That cage was in this jar previously before I started this video. I just pulled it out and now this jar has the lid down tight. Ah, you could hear some of the gas come off of it because the fermentation is still going on here, but I'm not providing a bunch of oxygen for it. And over time, you'll see separation of the whey from the milk solids. And so I'll just, I'm gonna show you the process of what, how this changes with time and how easy it is to change out when this has finished its first ferment, how easy it is to just move the grains from one container to a new jar and start the process over again. I'll show you that as we go along. It is now 24 hours later and the jars of kefir in their first and second ferment process have had time to do their thing for the milk to ferment. And so I will show you changing out the grains and adding new milk and also turning the second ferment this jar into something you'd want to drink because this right here in all its milk solid curdled goodness nobody wants to just start chugging that down so i'm going to show you how to turn it into a drink that you'd want to have so with a closer look you can see as i showed you the other day yesterday the Grains are in this um, cage here, and now we've got some nice separation going on. We can see some pockets of clear whey down here and some of it up here, and the milk has kind of got a, a little jiggly jelly consistency to it. It's not quite as th thick as you might think, but it's definitely thickened up some. And then this is the second ferment jar. See, second ferment, I can keep them apart by the labels. Obviously, and I know what they're supposed to look like too, but anyway, there's a lot more whey here. And if I wanted, I could use that whey for other purposes than just blending it back into this. But um, first we'll go ahead and take care of this jar and blend it up and show you how to make this something that is appealing to drink. A stick blender is gonna help me get the job done. You could use a regular blender, but I'm gonna just keep it confined to working with the jars. So I'm bringing down my jar of the second ferment. I'm gonna have a dish towel for splashes. I'm just take the lid off, put my stick blender. It's also called an immersion wand. Uh, so put that, plug that in. Now that it's plugged in, I need to be really careful to keep my fingers away from the dangerous end where this blade is down there at the end. Um, 
So this just gets put into the jar and then blend it up. really that easy. Now I'm going to disengage the two pieces so I don't accidentally hurt myself on the blade end here and I can just sit down in the sink and that can be pushed back. And <clears throat> my husband and son like to drink this plain. I like to um, sweeten it and uh, I really like it with a few drops of um, almond extract in it uh, or many different ways, but I'm going to portion this out into hopefully three equal portions and by putting in them, putting this uh, here in one of these kind of jars, which is different from a the canning jars I might use, it signals to my husband or my son that they can just take the jar and shake it up and it will be re-blended. Um, this will separate just like that did, but now it's nice and smooth and for some reason that one step of blending makes it possible that even if I find this separated in the refrigerator, I can just shake it up and then I have a a very generous portion, probably a cup of uh, kefir, milk kefir, kefir to drink. And leaving them plain like this will make my husband happy and then I can just uh, doctor mine up however I want later on when I'm ready to drink it. And I will show you these in the refrigerator later on in the video. I'll show them in their separated state and prove to you that just a, a shake will re-blend them. That's not a tight seal, so I'm splashing stuff around. I might need to figure out my jar situation. Maybe I'd need a different kind of container. Anyway, I was thinking that I'll use these jars in the fridge and then it's a visual cue to husband and son. These are ready for drinking. So those jars are put away now and we're ready to deal with the first ferment jar, the jar that has the kefir grains in it. The grains have been feeding on the bacteria, grains or bacteria, have been feeding on the sugar, the lactose, milk lactose in this milk, and now they're ready to be um, refed. They, they need more food. So I'm just going to pull the cage out of the jar, and I might scrape off some of the edges here. The solids have built up on the outside of the jar. And that's going to go in here like that, plump. Uh, so now the kefir cage is in here. And remember, this is what the brand new kefir cage looks like. And I took the string off of mine because it annoyed me. So now it's as simple as just going ahead and pouring milk over this. So the grains will now have a new batch of milk to feed from. I pour it up to about the shoulder and I put on the first ferment lid. Now I am gonna screw this down tight for just a second, give it a shake and loosen it so that I could just lift the lid off and it'll just sit on there as a cap. Put it back up on the shelf and this will become my second ferment. So I've got the second ferment label lid on here. I will turn this one down tight. It doesn't need any more oxygen to keep um, doing well. And that will sit there. And now that's all there is to it. I fed the grains and I'm ready to let this new jar here, let's turn this around. So this jar is the first ferment jar with the, loose, the lid on loosely so the grains can get oxygen. Um, the fermentation process needs oxygen. It's 
aerobic, not anaerobic. Whereas this second jar, the lid is down tight. It doesn't need to have oxygen to continue fermenting. But um, now this is gonna set for probably another 24 hours and this will take another 24 hours to ferment up enough so it looked like it did when we started this part of the video. I'll show you tomorrow morning that the two jars look the, like they looked this morning and I'll change them out one more time and in the process I'll probably open the grain cage and show you what the grains look like because I know my grain cage is full of grains and it's time to split it apart and give the grains some more uh, room to grow they just keep multiplying and growing maybe there's somebody in the area I can share the grains with if not I could start another batch of kefir if I want and double the amount of kefir, uh, kefir, kefir that I'm making. You saw that I used um, this carton of milk and this is organic fat-free milk that is not ultra pasteurized. Now this, I could have used um, whole milk. This is organic whole milk and it is ultra pasteurized. Now that's not my preference to use this because by using whole milk, um, I've automatically got fats and carbs together. And by using the fat-free milk, the skim milk, or a low-fat milk, like 1% or 2%, gives me a little more wiggle room in what I choose to do with the kefir, whether I want to keep it really low in fats and carbs, or whether I want to add fats to it so I can go either direction. And that would be something that is related to my Trim Healthy Mama lifestyle. So I will, um, I will add on to this video tomorrow when I change out the grains again and show you again that this stage of first ferment, second ferment is just a round and round process. We're in a new day now and the kefir first ferment and second ferment have done their thing and I'm ready to feed them or feed the kefir grains by giving it more milk, taking the cage out of this jar and putting it in another jar and giving it more milk to feed off them. And this second ferment doesn't have any grains in it. It's ready just to be blended so it's drinkable um, and ready for use. I will start by blending up the second ferment because nobody wants to drink that but you blend it and it's a whole lot nicer. So here's my immersion wand or my stick blender, whatever you want to call it. So blend this up, stick it down in here. Just putting my hand over the top for splatter. All right, that's really nice and creamy now. Let's disengage this part so I don't hurt myself. Raise my hands. And then I'm going to pour this off into three jars. because this amount is about three servings, or I could combine two jars for myself if I wanted. So nice and smooth now, and I'll show you the jars that are in the fridge from yesterday. Okay, let's pack these off. And they'll go in the fridge. See, there's the two of yesterday's jars and they've separated a little bit, but that's okay. Just a, a good shake and they're blended back together again. And I just put these three jars in here. See, I can just reach in, get one of these jars, give it a shake, and it's all nice and mixed up again. It's not goopy like the, um, the batch that wasn't blended just a minute ago. We blended up the 
the second ferment and now we have the empty jar that we could just move the cage into and fill this with milk. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pull down the first ferment jar and the lid just comes off easily because it was loose, left loose. We can pop the cage from one from the first ferment into this jar and then cover it with milk up to the shoulder, the rounded edge of the jar. This one will now become the second ferment jar. I'm going to shake it up, put it up here, and let it ferment until it has separated. Now this is the first ferment now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake this up and uh, sort of rinse off the grains a little bit that are in the cage. And I said earlier that I'm pretty sure my kefir cage is filled up with grains that have expanded, multiplied. So this is the unused kefir cage. I'm going to just, I'm going to reach in and pull this out and take a look. Ugh, that's a mess. Take a look. And okay, let me wipe this up. I wipe up my spills as I go along so they don't dry on and just makes me feel better to have a clean working area. So this cage is filled up with grains now. I had, uh, I'd taken away half the grains last time and taken them to California with me to be able to make kefir while I was there. Let me show you what the, the grains look like. I'll dump out some. Well, I'll dump out all. Okay, so now this cage is basically empty and I want about that much grains in here. So I have more than enough to share with somebody. I can snap this closed again. It can go back in here, rinse off my fingers. And this is ready now. Whoops, I don't want that on tight. I'm gonna shake it up again. Not that I have to, it just makes me happy. Okay, get the lid off. Let's see if you can. Now you can see that the grain cage is a little less than half filled with grains. And that's going to sit with a cap on loosely. Aerobic fermentation, so I'm at first ferment and second ferment. Now let me show you these grains close up a little bit more. Looks almost like cottage cheese. And they're coated with the milk lactose. I can rinse off some with some water and show you that. Grains do not like to be rinsed off, um, so I don't do that in between usage. But basically, those, that's a clump of them, and they're kind of cauliflower-shaped pieces. Now, what I'm going to do with my extra grains that I pulled off this batch here is I'm going to put them away into storage, basically. I'll show you what that can look like. I'll go ahead and get them in the new kefir cage. Just put them in here. And then they will go in a jar. <clears throat> they will go in a new jar of milk. If I were keeping this for myself, I would cut off the string, but I'm going to give this kefir cage to our daughter in California when I go see her next month. So I'll keep the string intact for her sake, but I'm going to save these grains, cover them in milk so they have something to feed off from up to the shoulder. And I will tighten the lid down. They don't, <clears throat> I don't want them to do a lot of fermenting. This jar can now go in the fridge and just be 
it will slow everything way down. When, they're, when it's left out on the counter, the fermenting process is active and it, it happens in within 24 hours, usually. But when it goes into the cold refrigeration, it slows everything down. And these are recently fed, so I think this could, this will easily be fine until a couple weeks from now when I go to, um, back to California. Those extra grains are gonna now sit in the back of our fridge and wait until it's time for me to go to California. I will check on the jar. If I see that there's a lot of separating of the whey and the milk solids, that's an indication to me that the grains have been eating the milk sugars and they might need to have some fresh milk added to them. But I can keep an eye on it. I think it's gonna be fine for the next four or five weeks, whatever it is, before I go back to California. When I travel with the grains, I'll stick it in probably two layers of baggie with some milk in there, some fresh milk in there for the grains to keep them going during the day while I'm traveling. And they'll just sit in the within the cage, in some milk, in a couple of baggies to prevent leakage and then that's how I will travel with the kefir grains and I can make kefir while I'm there at our daughter's home and I can leave her with the kefir cage because she wants to make kefir but her time is very limited and so this is the fastest way I can think of doing it. You have the grains in the cage and you move it from jar to jar and you just keep moving it from jar to jar and you don't have to go through the sifting process. Some people have to put the grains in a little colander, very fine mesh colander so they don't lose the grains through the holes of the colander. I don't mess with any of that. Now it's the kefir cage, just rotate it through. Unfortunately, that kefir cage isn't cheap. It's about 19 bucks, um, but to me it's worth it. I've been using it quite a few months and I bought one and gave it to a friend when she was in town and wanted to have some grains and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll give her a cage and make her life easier too. Uh, when you're buying kefir from the grocery store, you're spending a, a fair bit of change to do that. Um, and it's a lot cheaper to make kefir at home and the kefir cage makes this process easy. And the bacteria, so I'm told, is much more um, powerful when it's a homemade kefir versus the kind you're buying in the grocery store, even if you do a double ferment on the grocery store version. Like when I, um, I taught my father about kefir and he can buy the kefir in the grocery store, he could take it home, he could leave it out on the counter, unrefrigerated for 24 hours and then put it in his refrigerator that will increase the bacterial bacteria content for the uh, good healthy gut bacteria um, but it's still i've heard that it's not the bacteria is not as potent when it's the store-bought kefir even double fermented i'm going to put instructions kefir instructions and the link to the kefir cage in the description box just try to make the description box as a helpful resource for um, you to use if you want to track down information on um, why you want to drink kefir, what are the health benefits of it, so on and so forth. That's it. That's the end.